Tonight on Missing Persons Unit, rising from the ashes. And we've located further bones and some clothing. Chilling clues to a four-year mystery. Do you believe you know who it is? Plus the case of missing mum. Do you have any idea where she may be? No. Jeanette's final text message. Sad goodbye okay? or a cry for help. The bizarre conclusion to the disappearance of Kevin O'Connor. I've been told you can survive on no food for 14 days. Missing for eight you days, but now... It's very narrow. Back. Something right at the end here. And who can forget Colin's heartbreaking 40-year search for his dad? I want to see you before, before it's too late. Well... Guess who was watching? I'm finally going to meet my dad after 40 odd years. Overnight, another 21 people have been reported missing. Vanessa, you've got a 35 year old lady from Punchbowl. Senior Constable Vanessa Rolfe is assigned the case of Jeanette, a mother of four who disappeared two days ago after leaving a final worrying text message. She's got four children from 11 down to two years of age. Don't I believe we've got new information about the missing persons case that you've been working on? Yeah, Sutherland Police have located remains after a bushfire down in Loftus. Um, Constable Diana Cassie believes remains found in the National Park might be those of a 77-year-old man last seen walking in the area four years before. We're going to make our way down there today to assist OSG in a search. The Penrith case from yesterday, how'd they go? He's been located, we believe. Missing dad, Kevin O'Connor, disappeared eight days ago. But the good news is that he's turned up very close to home. So I'm going to contact the inspector that we dealt with yesterday and just confirm exactly what happened. Let's go. Last week, the missing persons unit investigated the disappearance of 54-year-old Penrith dad, Kevin O'Connor. I just didn't know where he was. It was just a mystery to me. He walked off one morning wearing only shorts and a T-shirt and just vanished. And we sort of thought he might have, um, you know, hitched a ride somewhere. But the police search Hello. focused on Kevin's neighbourhood. We're investigating a missing person report. And his favourite place, the local river. Yeah, exactly. But despite an extensive search, nothing seems to add up in this baffling case. Something doesn't definitely sit right, so it's a bit of a worry at this stage. But today, there is some great news for Kevin's family. We had some information this morning from Penrith that our missing person has turned up, so we're just going to head out and speak to his wife now, make sure everything's fine and he was OK, and I guess the circumstances, how he was found. But what really happened to Kevin? Well, Diana and Mandy are about to hear an extraordinary tale of survival. Meanwhile, back at the missing persons unit, Senior Constable Vanessa Rolfe is hard at work trying to find Jeanette, the mother of four who's been missing for 48 long hours. Have you heard from your wife at all? No. No. Jeanette's husband, Simon, reported her missing after she failed to show up for work. Has she done this before? No, we've never, ever. Even if we've had our ups and downs, we're under a lot of pressure because of family problems. You know, then Monday night when she just said, I'm coming back to work to do a few things. And, and who's looking after the children? I am. Oh, you are. Do you have any idea where she may be? No, I can't. Couldn't even think of anything. The last time anyone heard from Jeanette was a text message she sent her best friend, Annalise, the day she disappeared. Did Annalise say she'd ring you if she heard anything? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. If anybody she'll call, it'll be Annalise or her mum. Okay. I mean, just to get some news or a phone call to say, look, I want a few days or whatever. I mean, just, just a phone call. But Jeanette made one like final one plea. Else. And it's this oh, last text that, uh, message to Annalise that's most worrying police. In Penrith, 
Kevin's wife, Mary, reported him missing eight days ago. My name, this is Diana, we're from the Missing Persons Unit. But where he was eventually found would stagger even Diana and Mandy. It's a fluke that we found him because Karen at seven o'clock last night was having a shower and she had the conditioner in her hair and she heard this knocking, right? Mm. And we th- and it kept going. So she she just jumped out of the shower and we're and we're saying and she's saying, Mum, there's a knocking, there's a knocking. What is it? What is it? So we're running around the house in the dark, saying, What's where is it? What is it? What is it? And then we heard this little voice in the weakest voice. Karen. It, you know, like weak. And we thought, oh my god. Back at the missing persons unit, Vanessa has finally managed to track down Jeanette's girlfriend, Hello, Annalise. Hello, speaking. Hi, Annalise, it's Vanessa Roth from the police missing persons unit. I know that she was on medication for depression, but she stopped taking it. And this morning I've spoken to a few friends and she was very teary and very upset. I just feel helpless. Yes. And, um, and then I was going to come and talk to... Um, Sergeant Garnett, um, just to see if there's anything I've missed that I haven't told him. Okay. Um, And that's exactly where Vanessa heads. The Campsie Police Station to read that last terrifying text message Jeanette sent the day she disappeared. In Penrith, Mary is stunned by her husband's ordeal. He'd been under the house. It, it's just the most... Ho- he, he was actually nearly dead. Oh, gee. I put the torch in and the, the entry is there yeah. and he was right down the end, gee. hidden because he thought we would look under the house, right? He had to crawl his way out and it was a long, painful yeah. thing. He had to ne- crawl along like this on his knees and his elbows. He was actually nearly dead. It's a mystery how he got in and out, you know. That's what I was going to ask oh. you. Can you show me? Yeah, I will. So, just so I, I will. know for myself. Yeah. Back at Penrith, Kevin is now recovering in hospital. And this is where he existed alone for eight days. Don't go under. But he was right up the end of the house. He was lying on rocks. He's covered with bruises. Can you see anything? No. There's a lot of brick pillars, so it's hard to sort of see. Amazingly, Kevin survived for over a week hiding here, in the dark, without food or water. It looks like that could be bedding up there, actually. It's quite clear, though. There's, as you said, there's a clear path from here, but um, too many cobwebs for me. Across town, as Vanessa drives to the police station, she knows that time may be running out for Jeanette. Um, Annalise, the, uh, Jeanette's best friend, will be meeting us out there. Hopefully she'll set, um, shed some light on the investigation. And her best friend, Annalise, also knows there's no time to lose. I think some people underestimate her. I, she's a very strong woman. She's got the guts to do something, like to go somewhere or to drive somewhere, so I would say she's very unstable at the moment. And that's very apparent from the last distressing Um, message Jeanette sent to Annalise. By the time I read it, showed my husband and dialed the number, her phone's off. So Vanessa needs to know immediately if Jeanette is capable of acting on the threat she made in her final message. Back in Penrith, Kevin's wife is determined to show Mandy how her husband survived the ordeal. And he told us that he had his foot against the hot water pipe to keep him warm. Oh, right. oh OK, right in the corner. Yeah. So he was here. So that's a l- yeah. long way. And we said to him, why did you call out? You know, why not earlier? And he said, I couldn't do it anymore. And I honestly believe if you hadn't come... You know, like now, if we hadn't have found him today, we would have been finding a body tomorrow. So what did drive Kevin to spend eight days hiding under the floorboards of his house? The thing that triggered him off to do such a strange and bizarre thing 
because he'd never do, ever done this in 55 years, was that he was worried they would put him into hospital. He doesn't want to take any yeah. drugs. They give yeah. him headaches and they make him sick, yeah. you know? I'm just really glad that it's all worked out and he's yeah. in the best place and, oh. and you're okay and hopefully you know, Karen's okay too. Yeah. And even after everything she's been through, yes. Mary still Look finds a reason home. to smile. Look close to home. Look in the obvious places. Like when you lose your car keys, go and look in the fridge. <laughs> it's a happy ending and case closed on Kevin O'Connor, but not before police give Mary a useful tip so of their own. Think about putting a lock maybe under there. Yes. Just for your own peace of mind, you know. Yes, exactly. I'm not saying it's going to happen again, but like for your own peace of mind, then yes. you know, you can't sort of get under there. And... Yes, OK. You take it All easy. Right. Thank okay. you very much. much. OK, OK. All right, All right then, bye-bye. Meanwhile, back at Campsy, Annalise paints a picture she's of a friend in desperate she need of support. Um, she's talked about hurting herself before. Um, on a few occasions she's talked about that. And um, she's asked me to promise her to look after the children. And I said to her that you can't ask me that because it's not fair. I've got no say of your children, you know. But in her um, final cry for help, that's exactly what Jeanette asked Annalise and, um, to do. The phone went off, I picked it up, and it just says, make sure my kids are well looked after. Across town, Constable Diana Cassi is travelling south to begin work on her new case. The identification of human bones unearthed after a recent bushfire. Well, we're currently on our way to the site where crime scene are and Sutherland Police, a few detectives and the OSG personnel who are searching the area and they're going to brief us on what's happening and what's been happening in the last few days with the search. The search site is in the Royal National Park near Sutherland, New Hello, South Paul, Wales. How are you going? How are you going? Diana from Paul the Missing Johnson. Persons Unit. Nice to meet you. Meet you. Yeah. So what have you actually found? Last week on uh, Thursday evening there was a little fire in this area of bushland over here. Oh, OK. And while the uh, National Park Service was in fighting that fire, mm -hmm. they located some remains. We were working from the back of the vehicle. The vehicle Firefighter Peter here. Young was first on the scene and discovered the bones. Approximately two or three metres in front of me there was this object. And during the course of the night, uh, more and more objects of uh, interest were found. Okay. Well, that was the first item we found and it wasn't immediately obvious that it was yep. a human remain, but it uh, turned out to be. Diana suspects the remains could be linked to a missing persons case of a 77-year-old man last seen walking through here four years ago. So you, do you believe you know who it is or...? At this stage, um, we have indications, okay. um, but uh, we can't be certain at this stage. It's probably one of our missing persons? I, at this stage, it looks like it possibly, yes. Yeah. Back at Campsie Police Station, for Annalise, reading that final text message from Jeanette is heartbreaking. Please stop her. I love you. Please make sure um, my kids are well looked after. And it's just got a picture of somebody crying. This is the only clue police have to work with. Um, that's what. It scared me straight away, just going, oh, God, you know. Because I've asked her to promise me that if she was going to hurt herself, that she would tell me so I could help her. But with Jeanette's um, mobile turned off, police so have no way of tracing her so and no way to help her. And the local police have checked all the local hospitals around here. And with no sign of Jeanette at local hospitals, her friend Annalise fears the worst. I just don't know where she'd be. Back in the National Park, police are conducting a line search across the area. What they're using is rakes and tools to scrape all the humus, the uh, build-up, yep. from at least the last couple of years' worth of uh, leaf litter. And as you can see, it's actually getting sieved and hand-searched, uh, looking for various items. It's a painstaking task that police will continue until they've searched every inch of this site. 
It is a stick, but it did look like part of a bone. Yeah, it does. It looks like, like one yeah. of these bones. But, so, uh, yeah. Anthropologist Dr Denise Donlan has arrived to identify the remains. That, it does look like a radiosaur in Almond. It's now her job to cross-match the bones against Diana's missing persons file. It appears as if the, the body was probably not buried, that it was on the surface, and some clothes have been found on the surface as well. So all that's fairly typical of someone who has, who has just died and not actually been buried. Diana's hope is that a result will bring closure for a family after four long years. At Campsie Police Station, there's finally been a breakthrough in the case of missing mother of four, Jeanette. Yes. I've just got some news. Um, they've just found Jeanette. But the news is not all good. Back at Campsie Police Station, police are briefing Annalise about her missing best friend, Jeanette. She's OK. She's OK. She's OK. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> Simon actually found her. Oh, where was she? She's in Banks. She's at Banks now. She's in her car. She is not well. And she's going, she's at the moment being transported to Bankstown Hospital. Yeah. And she will be assessed there. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Did she take something? Yeah. She has um, tried to take her own life. Yeah. And um, she was found semi conscious. She is breathing on her own. Yeah. But um, she needs a lot of help, obviously. Jeanette is alive. Oh, thank God. But it'll be some time before she's out of danger. Thank God. Back at the search site, Dr. Donlan has made a breakthrough. Uh, two of the bones are quite interesting in that they, uh, they're the, the thigh bones or the femurs and they've both got metal attachments to them, that is they've got, had hip replacements. Diana's files show that her missing person, who disappeared here four years ago, also had a hip replacement. That's wonderful in terms of identification because there are markers on those metal hip replacements. It's a bit of humorous. So every item and their serial numbers are now photographed and their locations fixed by a GPS reading That'll so the police can mark it as evidence exactly it for the coronial GPS inquiry. Police believe they know who the person is, but they can't reveal this until the coroner has confirmed their identity. I guess you guys are looking at medic obtaining medical records and maybe that being a, a form of identification. Yeah, all the evidence that we can gather here, plus medical evidence from the family, yep. will assist us in making that positive identification and, of course, will assist the family in, in getting some closure to, to the, their uh, loved one. The final step in resolving this case is to compare the remains collected here against x-rays and medical records of Diana's missing person. It's been a good find today with the OSG personnel and hopefully for a positive identification in the next couple of days when we head to the coroner's court for the identification stage. Who can forget Colin Locke and his emotional story when we met him earlier in the series? Colin has spent his entire adult life searching for his missing dad. He took us out on a day trip and then uh, something happened and then that's the last I've seen him. That is until Constable Pat McEwen tracked him down in a nursing home. We, um, we've located your father. It um, certainly just, was not the happy just, ending Colin you know, had hoped for. He doesn't wish for any family members to know his location. So he made a heartfelt plea to his father. If you're watching this, Dad, um, I, I would like you to meet my wife and children and your, your grandchildren. And I just want, want to see you before, before it's too late. And his dad saw it all. Apparently they uh, got my dad to watch the program on TV and uh, he had a change of heart after seeing the show. And I'm 
you know, finally going to meet my dad after 40 odd years. It's a big moment. It's a missing link in my life. For Colin, who last saw his father as a seven year old boy, 40 years of searching comes down to this next moment. Back at Campsie, Vanessa and Gary begin examining Jeanette's car, in which she was found slumped at the wheel after trying to take her own life. Jeanette is stable um, at the moment. It is a shame that she was in her car for quite some time. We are very lucky that someone did find her um, just in time, but I do stress, I suppose, the moral of the story is that if you do see something out of the ordinary, if someone doesn't look well, whether it be a child or an animal or an adult, that you do do something about it and do ring police. Jeanette is now recovering in intensive care. We can just hope for the best and that she recovers and she's definitely in the right place at the moment. Three hours later, Colin Locke returns from his first meeting with his father in 40 years. And his smile that was very good. says it all. I can't, I can't really express what I feel. Um, I, I am extremely, extremely happy. His, his eyes and mine are you know, exactly the same, like, you know, and facial features. And we were talking about you know, the types of food we like. Pickles and uh, corned beef. <laughs> Colin's dad refused to appear on camera, but at last he's a part of his son's life. I'm just trying to organise him to meet his uh, grandchildren and uh, great-grandchildren. And my thanks to uh, Pat and the Missing Persons Unit. Couldn't be happier. Next week... Four years on, and finally the clues that may end a nightmare. So we can see the bone cut here and yes. here. Will the coroner's finding bring closure for one family? But then, then on the balance of probabilities, I am satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt. And 15-year-old runaway Natasha. It's been nearly 24 hours, you know, since she left, so where did she go? You know, that's the thing. And her desperate mum. We just really need to know where you are. Here it is. Jackie and Penny's 30 year search for their lost mum oh continues. My God. <laughs> oh. Which leads to um, a brother they never brother, knew they is, had. He's our full brother. 